All right, everyone. It is me, Johnson Chan. And of course, I forgot to turn off the autofocus. All right, so I feel fantastic. I uh, been thinking more about God. Been thinking more about um, how I want to proceed. You know, you know, with making the game, making the lore, how that's going to connect with you know all the stuff I do online. Because I really kind of want to really get back and do uh, going. Uh, doing political stuff, right? So I can help people. Plus, I just enjoy the topic. But I mean, I mean, obviously, I'm changing and I'm improving. So it's like, you know, I, I just, uh, it, it just, it just doesn't seem to really be all that helpful, right? Because I can't say what I really want to say. So basically, I can't tell the real truth. I would be forced to cover like, you know, the normie bullshit, which is just useless, right? I mean, that's why we already have cable news. I mean, it's all basically lies, so why would I want to cover crap like that? In fact, that's why I didn't even bother the impeachment stuff. I just didn't care. I mean, I already knew the result before it even got... Even, even before it got announced, there was just rumors circulating that the Democrats were just basically going to go impeachment after the Russia hoax scam failed. I already knew what was going to happen, right? And yeah, it happened exactly as uh, as it would uh, as it tra as transpired because it's all rigged, all right? It's all it's all lies, right? The Democrats have no intention of winning this year, and I'm still amazed that there's still so many idiots that vote Democrat Party. It's like we're being lied and scammed to by the Democrat Party, but I'm still going to vote for them, right? At least Republicans have enough pride and you know. Uh, somewhat self-awareness to just simply scream at the Republican Party and try to like force it, uh, force it to do it what it wants. Uh, but then you know more Republican boomers are like, nah, you know we'll pass on that. So that's kind of reason why they have that whole Groyper uprising, uprising thing. The left wing equivalent of that is the Bernie communist uprising. The problem is they're just too crazy. They want to put everybody in gulags, uh, gulags, right? But I mean, at the very least, you know, if they do, Bernie Sanders does somehow become president, right? You know, probably not this year, and I don't think he'll make it to 2024. But if he does somehow make it to the presidency, at least I can rest assured that, like, all the evil rich people in this world and all the bad corporations will get completely fucked in the ass. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, as they should, because they, they ruined our society, they ruined, uh, um, you know our uh you know morals and all that stuff and uh yeah they do it in the name of just stealing more money from all of us so uh yeah and i could care less i mean they're the ones you know censoring us all anyway they're actually a large reason why i can't do the political stuff that i want to do so why would i help them so anyway uh yeah so i think for the time being i just make the game obviously hopefully it should be good it'll be designed because i'm going to be sticking with it basically pretty much forever because it's going to be based on uh my dream tv series and then i've decided that i'm probably gonna have to make it animated because it, it, i'm just not going to be able because if i'm going to be doing it over years in spurts that's just too unstable right i can't have real live acting because like just because a bunch of actors are just gonna and actresses are just gonna come in and leave so it's like gonna completely mess up my uh my show so at least if it's animated, everyone will always look the same because it's not hard to draw. And then all you have to do is just get the voice actors, right? You know, I can still tell a great story, you know, with animation. Right? And I think like what I would want is probably get like a Unreal 3D engine, like the best possible graphics, and then just render the show through that. Um, so it'll be uh, it'll, it'll be pretty nice. Plus, and the best part is. It would also make it a lot easier to design the ships and, you know, all the special effects because it's all done through a video game engine, right? You know, the start as a video game and it'll be a video game and it'll end like one, but it'll compete against, like, you know, the big boys in Hollywood because um, there's, because I'm just not going to, because it's like, you know, we just got to, we got to start sticking it to Satan a little bit, you know? So anyway, we're off to Cloud World number 334. Now that it's Friday, I'm actually getting a little worried about the coronavirus because obviously it's just gonna it's just killing Asian people and the Chinese people specifically, left and right. Uh, so let's see. Chapter Chinese Express April is death toll breaks. Oh yeah, so I, I mentioned it yesterday probably. SOS alert. Yeah, of course. Um, but yeah, like Tencent leaked those numbers. I, I don't believe like I can definitely get behind China fudging the numbers. 
But the problem is the 10 cent numbers are just too big. They're like literally a thousand percent larger than it, than it is. Or, uh, yeah, it's, that's way too much, right? That, that's so many, that's so many people. And on top of that, they said that only t like less than a fraction of 1% are recovering from the virus. No, that's actually like you can't have less than a fraction of percent going up against a number that says you have about a 90% chance of living, right? Like the truth is always somewhere in the middle and look how big of a gap that is. Like the numbers just don't work. And we're not talking about money here. We're talking about people living or dying. It's literally life or death. So people are not going to be lying about that shit. I mean, they are, but they're not going to be lying so much that it's clearly obvious, even to the Communist Party in China, that like, yeah, we can't we can't bullshit this. There's just too many dead bodies. We're going to have to actually release something out there. And on top of the people in China apparently are getting very angry at the government too for basically not doing enough. Uh, yeah, and then this poor doctor, he's like 34 years old, he got the virus when treating people for it, and then he died, so it's like, you know, I don't know it's the really big problem is China's losing a lot of doctors to this fucking coronavirus shit. Uh, let's see, head shake bands to stop the coronas might be overkill in most places. Um, technically that's true, but you know what, I would support a handshake band, alright? Like, look, like, just, just, just don't do it, all right? I mean, fuck, Japan over here is already quarantining a cruise ship. Uh, so, uh, there's, like, yeah, it's, there's a picture of that here. So, there's, like, a, <laughs> there's a lot of, um, I, I, I think they're docked right now, so they're still getting food and supplies, obviously, but they've got, they've now found that 61 people have now been infected. Of course, they're not releasing the race of it, so that's kind of important, because, you know, uh, cause we need, cause people need to know that this actually mostly affects, uh, Asians. So far, white people have not been affected, really affected by it. In fact, there was a BBC reporter in Wuhan that didn't even have his mask on. You know, he was just walking around like normal, right? So, yeah. So, like, when, so when Chinese citizens in China says it's a, well, China hasn't said it, but Chinese citizens believe it's a bioweapon designed by the CIA. Yeah. I'm gonna believe that, right? Because like, if it was by nature, then this virus should be afflicting everyone, because that's what na natural viruses do. But yeah, plenty of doctors have already said this thing does not look natural. So, you know, yeah. But you know, uh, but yeah, I, I, I actually think it was a, uh, it was derived from SARS because it's very similar to that, right? They're both coronaviruses. And then there's a big bio lab in Wuhan. And then I think what just happened was the Chinese were probably, the Chinese government was probably trying to develop some sort of vaccine for SARS. And then they, someone screwed up, right? And then now it broke out. And then, well, China's not going to come out and say, hey, you know, we were experimenting with uh, vaccines and the deadly viruses. And then we screwed up. So, uh, yeah, so now it's all over the place. Of course, they're not going to say that. They're just going to blame it on something else, right? Scapegoat is like. Oh yeah, we don't like these Chinese people eating wolves and bats, so we'll just blame it on that, right? That's very believable. Yeah, so, you know, so the Chinese government gets a two-for-one deal. Unfortunately, uh, you know, the problem is they have to deal with the virus, right? And I have to worry about it, right? But luckily, you know, all my family members are definitely not going to China that I know of, right? So, uh, yeah, so we're, uh, so we're Tamaguchi here uh in america see this is why i don't like traveling because i don't want to deal with shit like that all right so uh yeah so anyway uh let's see yeah so i, I think on a personal level you know um going forward the game will be uh pretty much the center of everything and then uh you know i think when i get famous enough from the game because i because it sucks that the custody bounce around all over the place i just want something sustainable you know good returns on whatever works that i'm doing not necessarily money, though, of course, I'll probably get a lot of money eventually, right? And then, uh, yeah, you know, and then I think what will happen is on Saturday and Sundays, eventually in the future, I'll not have the Bitcoin videos, right? Because generally there's no point, right? You just want to put content up there. But instead, I can have like a live show or something as people just call in. So it's kind of like, you know, it's because I... Because I'm really good at a radio talk show host type of format, you know, so that's why Nick Fuentes does America First. Jesse Lee Pearson does his thing. When Mike Cernovich was active, he did his periscopes. I want exactly that thing. That's all. And then just people just call. We talk about whatever. And by then, you know, I'll be at least years from now. 
it should be probably like you know at least one year before Trump's uh, term, second term is over. Uh, and then, of course, you know, between then a couple of years after the 2024 president takes over. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, well, we'll see. We'll see how far progressed uh, Nick Fuentes and the corporate uprising can go. Right. Because uh, the Republican establishment is like a formidable enemy. Right. The Democrats, you know, they actually have some smart people. But the problem is they're uh, they're ultimately limited by like the flaws and bad ideas that Democrats and liberals have always been you know weighed down by right the republican party is uh is much more dangerous simply because they actually have the good ideas they just won't do them right now we're finding out that's actually what the truth is right they don't have the empathy or the chops to defeat the liberals and democrats so that's why they're always just losing elections in the culture war but they are good at one thing conserving you know their money and their ill-gotten gains and power so that's that's going to be pretty tough Right. You want an example of that, you know, you know, the Sackler family, right? The the billionaire, I can't name what type of or what tribe they're from, right? You know, they were they were poisoning people for decades with I think it was called Oxycontin or something. And then a court recently ruled that they were fully guilty, right? Well what do those pieces of shit do, right? The Sackler family moved all their money to, uh, like this whole time to like some offshore account and for some reason we can't uh, st- uh take their money. And they declared bankruptcy, and, not, and they don't pay anything out. So the whole court system was like completely useless. So uh, I don't know what's going to happen, but going for, well, first of all, I'm going to definitely want that kind of level of protection. And number two, going forward, we need to stop people from being able to do that, right? When Enron happened, like now it's like 19 years ago or so, 20 years ago, uh, Enron tried doing something similar, and then the U.S. government was like, "Go fuck yourself," right? They just simply took their money anyway like they sent in the, like the troops or the irs SWAT teams and it's like you know oh this is where their accounts are you give us the money right it didn't matter if they sh- shoveled the money outside the united states or whatever um but i'm not sure about the offshore thing i just know then uh finance class in college we talked a lot about it and they said we pierced the corporate veil it's very rare in the legal system you have to really piss off a lot of people and do something very bad uh, in order for that to happen, right? That's that's the like the level of a uh, of uh, uh, of criminal financial criminal activity that you have to do in order for that to happen, because almost no governments in the world want to do that. Uh, but the thing is, I think the story goes: George Bush's grandmother had Enron stock, and then she lost everything. And then obviously she complained to, you know, grandson Bush. And then obviously George loves his family, right? So he's like, you know what? They've made it personal. So I'm going to crush them like a bug, right? And then of course 9 11 also happened. So, you know, George Bush, as much of a prick as he was, he was an alpha male. So, you know, you fucked him in the ass, he's going to fuck you back in the ass like tenfold. So, uh, yeah, unlike Jed Bush, who's just simply a pushover. All right. So anyway, uh, searches google searches for bitcoin this week is still pretty low at seven so you know the normies are still taking a nap as the world's greatest opportunity since the real estate bubble and the dot-com bubble is occurring right now i keep refreshing this for some reason all right so bitcoin dominance is down to 64 percent very good 24 of them is 133.6 billion uh thingamajig trade volume so very healthy very strong a lot of buying going on and that's what we want uh bitcoin's up a little bit to 9803 so it looks like after the surge it's now kind of just you know doing another breather so that's what we like seeing litecoin's doing the same thing 73 dollars and 76 cents uh and it's also doing the same as bitcoin almost exactly right just look at the price pattern on the right hand side and you know it's just flat lining a little bit upwards Bitcoin Cash and SV is down a little bit. I was actually thinking about buying uh, these things too. I actually could probably buy it, you know. Because I like gambling, even though I tell you not to gamble, right? But that's because I can trust myself to do it. Um, but the thing is, like, I just like, I don't know. What benefit do I get? Like, even if I know I'm going to get, like, two, three hundred percent in, like, you know, a few weeks or whatever, like, is that really worth, is that really worth it to me, right? So, you know, it's like, yeah, I just like pass, you know, I, I, I've already done my gambling in my lifetime. If anything, 
I'll probably have a form of gambling in my video game and just use that instead for, for you know, virtual gambling. It's interesting because, like, when I was still playing Bit Heroes and trying to get the free offers, I could get like the forty, fifty dollar free in-game uh, value, uh, you know, bonuses. I would have to play other games, right, to and then reach a certain level or whatever to qualify and get my free. Uh, you know, it's basically like getting fifty dollars for free, right? Just playing a stupid game, All right? A lot of the games I actually wound up playing were like these, you know, virtual gambling slot video games, and I was like. Wow, these games are actually very popular. Right? People actually pay real life money to buy virtual currency so they can gamble it away for more fake currency. Right? To keep it legal, you can't gamble and then convert that gambling into real life money, which is something I'm going to have to wor eventually worry about when I do my real money market trading place. So, yeah, in fact, uh, yeah, and, and you know, randomization and gambling is going to be pretty important for like you know removing like you know items and currency in my game. But uh, actually, yeah, I'll probably start thinking about it after I finish this video. Um, but yeah, I'm just like surprised. People really do like gambling, right? It, it, it's not just a Chinese stereotypical thing. Like people like gambling, right? You go to England, you know, you, like that they. they gambling is legal there and they have like full regulation and stuff which is actually how i would do it right you shouldn't be gambling but people are going to do it anyway so you might as well have like you know uh we can't do a private regulation because eventually humans are just corruptible uh, so you might as well have the government do it they're also corruptible too but you know at least you know there's supposed to be transparency and accountability right because then if you don't like the gov people running the government you just kick them out or at least you're supposed to do that. So that's something to think about. Anyway, Doggy Coin is at 336.1 um, million market cap, so it's doing very nicely. Just look at that nice little straight line, uh, 45 degree angle, essentially. Uh, that's like, uh, that's beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, it's Steam. You know, Steam's been doing pretty well, actually. So, yeah, it's flatlining at 20.39 cents. It's actually doing all right. I like it, right? Because right now I'm getting my, you know, 12 to 15% APR on my Steam cryptocurrency. So, uh, yeah. You know, thanks to uh, D-Lease.io, D-Lease right? Yeah, thanks to this site, right? If you have Steam, use this site, D-Lease.io, and then just simply, uh, you know, get your money that way. I used to use Smart Steam. But then they kept changing their site. Now it's hard to use, and they want like five thousand Steam up front. And then it's like, you know what? It's just it's a pain in the ass. I get less rewards, and they want five thousand Steam up front for every contract. It's like, you know, just do it yourself. So we don't need a middleman anymore. Uh, can still worthless four seventy nine. Bitcoin Trust uh, it's up a little bit, which is about right. Uh, so not bad. Um, so as I said yesterday, the JMC Block Explorer is still sinking. Actually, where is it up to now? Uh, JMCBlock.com. Um, so when Mitch settles some other issues, we're definitely going to try to update the... Uh, oh my god, this thing is sinking so slow. We definitely are going to try to upgrade the uh, Block Explorer here. So this thing... I mean, we thought it would be, well, yesterday was five days, so now it'll be four days from now, but at this rate, this, this, this thing's going to take forever. I don't even know why it's sinking so slow. So, yeah, but um, but anyway, uh, it's technically fixed. It's just got to sink, and then it's just taking forever. Uh, but eventually, JMC will get back up, and like, quite frankly, it's probably fine, because people, you know, it gives JMC market a chance to eat away at this crazy sell wall. So JFC is at three to four. Uh, it's you know it's chipping away, chipping away. Not too bad right now. Um, four four is at ten to eleven. So I guess we're just going to be hanging around the ten to twelve range for a while. However, it is the buying pressure is slowly pushing away the selling pressure. So I don't. know, We'll see if. Uh, I definitely know that today it'll probably start buying at twelve. Sub Satoshi's four hundred four coin. I don't know if it's going to be uh, able to take chunks out of this. Oh, yeah. Also, today's Friday, so everyone's just going to be kind of, you know, uh, taking the weekend off. But, of course, crypto, uh, yeah, it does look like people don't really want to sell, right? 
But there's also a lot of activity going on, so uh, I guess it's a combo of, well, it's the weekend, let's take a break. And then two, you know, it is, it is you know, that time for crypto to kind of take a quick breather, so... So things might be slowing down. Um, two by two coin settling down as well. Seventy seven eighty seven. Oh. Excuse me. Seventy seven eighty seven. It's important that I actually burp because before I would just ignore it, and then I would have hiccups for the next hour. And of course, you know, it'd be recorded on the video too. So you know, it's uh, very annoying. I really hate hiccups. I didn't even eat anything. I literally just wake up, you know, do my daily root video game cryptocurrency routine, or I do only daily maintenance. And then, oh yeah, speaking of daily maintenance, let me launch Escape from Tarkov. Now that all the crazy, like, hype over the game is over, now I just get all, like, the the new players that just, like, are very undergeared. So, and I go in fully geared <laughs> with, 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 like, almost max shit. So, like, I just basically never die. Right, and I wanted to stay that way. So, you know, I'm happily farming in that game. Um, so, anyway, what was I saying? Uh, I completely forgot what I was saying. Uh, I, was, I was, like, going over three different things. Now I remember. Yeah, so I didn't even eat anything. So I don't understand why I'm burping. I'm sure there's a biological, scientific reason for it. And it obviously occurs because I'm talking. So it's probably has something to do with like my muscle, stomach muscles contracting. So all the air, you know, gets stuck or whatever. It needs to be expulsed or some shit. That's probably what it is. But yeah, anyway, 2x2, two two, doing all right. 7787. Um, yeah, but you know, I'm coming along pretty nicely. I'm finally getting over the basics of like the multiplayer stuff course in my uh, programming course. So today, and I think maybe tomorrow, uh, I probably want to take a day off because, you know, because I, cause I would love to just study seven days a week, so basically every day for programming. Uh, but it's really, you know, it's really dense, right? And, it's, you know, I'm like, you know, I should try to slow down a bit, all right, because it's also just making my brain go a little uh, hard. So, uh, but yeah, I almost, so today, and then another day, so I only have like... Let's see, let me look at it. Um, I'm up to less than 15 of 20. So this thing is eight, is basically nine minutes long. So basically I've got about 47 minutes, 45 minutes left of lessons spread over six separate lessons. And the last lesson is just the conclusion, which is a minute and 53. So it's really five lessons. So yeah, probably today. And then, so a total of two days, including today, I'll be done with the five, find the basics and then I can actually start programming an actual game. So the, so the next course is actually going to be programming a 3D battle royale. So, yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, whatchamacallit. So I'm still trying to think. Um, for my game, there's definitely a turn-based mode. And I'm not sure how I want that to look like. So I just recently reminded myself that I used to love playing Massive Variety too. That was a really fun turn-based game. So, I don't know, maybe something like that. So, you know, I've just put that in the flow chart. Um, I don't feel like getting the thing. So I just simply put that in the flow chart so I can remind myself later. But yeah, we definitely got, you know, plenty of fun content to do, right? Because World of Warcraft is successful. Why? Because you can do a lot of different things, right? It's easy to do it. Today's modern games... You know, I mean, I, th I think out of all of them, I think Escape from Tarkov, surprisingly, would actually be a pretty good MMO uh, RPG. That's a FPS, but it's a hardcore, you know, FPS MMO RPG. So, um, but uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, Compound Coins actually experienced some crazy uh, buying. So it's probably one guy that just wants a bunch of Compound Coin, and he bought it all the way up to eighty-seven twenty-nine. Uh, the low price is still four thousand fifty-six satoshis of a dog coin. I don't. I honestly have no idea how reliable this price is. So I'll probably just put something at like six thousand and just see if anyone buys it. I actually personally doubt anyone's gonna buy it. You know, for that low. But because it's so much lower than 87.29, maybe I, uh, that might uh, entice some people. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see. You know, still got my things going. Uh, where are we at? 24 and a half minutes. All right. So 
Uh, I actually kind of like this format better, right? Before I would just pre-screen all these articles, but I actually like reading the headlines because that gives everybody a more broad uh, thingamajig, and that's much more important. Uh, CME Bitcoin futures hit 10k as Bitcoin's Bitcoin price finally nears it. Yeah, that makes sense. Bitcoin ETFs are pumping as Bitcoin Depot network hits a new milestone. Bitcoin Depot, a crypto ATM network, announced on Thursday that now operates more than 500 ATMs in America. And based on this little blurb, that probably means they're expanding, so that's good. So that means, yeah, more Bitcoin adoption. That's what we want. Uh, then we've got some idiot bullshit uh, naysayer, so we just ignore that. Bitcoin up 95% since famous bull. Okay, so this does. Oh, yeah, said some idiot rich guy said don't buy it. Yeah, because, you know. Rich people, like the evil corporations like the Sackler family and the ph big pharmaceuticals. Yeah, of course they don't want you to get rich because you know what's going to happen, right? We actually hold these evil people accountable for once. You know, as much as I don't like the Bernie Sanders communist nut jobs, they actually, you know, have a lot of power because, uh, whatchamacallit, it's just like Trump, right? We all don't like these big evil corporations. It's only like the really old boomer idiots that still think like, you know, my free market bullshit that it's like, you know, they're completely disconnected from reality, uh, which is why ultimately, you know, the corporate uprising will take care of it. I used to do the same thing, but now I can't really do political shit. So, so yeah, but yeah, talk about that. nobody likes the boomers anyway, not the young, not the Zers, not the millennials, nobody except obviously other boomers. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Zero chance Wikipedia will ever use Bitcoin SV, says Jimmy Wales. Well, this guy is a fake news peddler terrorist, so fuck that guy. Um, but yeah. I, I also find it irritating that Wikipedia cannot be sued for fake information. It's like, like how, is that, how does that work, right? So, Wikipedia file says Bitcoin SV offers nothing. Uh, so, oh, okay, so people are just bashing Bitcoin. I don't care about Tesla. Yeah, I don't understand what is the relationship of Tesla and Bitcoin. Like, all right. Mad science for Bitcoin scam. Meet the KFC worker who ran a Bitcoin drug empire from his attic. Uh, he's been sentenced to eight years in prison after cops seized his drugs, cash, and over 300k pounds in Bitcoin from his attic. Well, you know, he played GTA 5 in real life, role play, and then, uh, well, you know, he's uh, he's banned from role playing for eight years, literally, like real life eight years. So, um, you, know, the, you know, the sad part about it is since he was taking in Bitcoin, he should have realized, you know what, why don't I just buy this shit and then just keep working at KFC? Sadly, uh, Satan um, was his daddy and not Jesus Christ and God. So he uh, he, he fell to uh, temptation and uh, despair and suffering and impatience. And now he's gonna he's gonna rot in a UK style jail for eight years, right? So uh, poor guy, poor guy. He just wanted to make a better life for himself, right? Because he's a fucking worker at KFC. All right, that's not a fun job. All right, every time I go to KFC. Which I haven't gone in a long time because in my case it's really far away. But every time I go there, the workers always look angry. With the exception of like the nice black lady manager. Because she's the manager, so she's probably getting actually paid something well. <laughs> uh, everyone always looks angry and depressed. Yeah, I'd be angry and depressed too if like my entire life was basically reduced to just serving shitty chicken all day to like, you know, all sorts of customers. So, uh... Yeah, and I love KFC. I love their shitty chicken. Fodtrat's uh, top chart sees Bitcoin approaching 11K. So more technical analysis. Blockstack's new consensus mechanism creates new use case for Bitcoin. Uh, I kind of don't want to read any articles, to be honest. But, well, uh, why is this here? It should be... Oh. Uh, all right, you know what? We'll browse it real quick. Um... The decentralized website is rather a consensus mechanism that suddenly presents a fresh use case for the thing. Uh, when Blockstack stack blockchain comes out, miners on the network will need to post Bitcoin to mine a block. That Bitcoin will then get shared with nodes maintain a copy of the ledger. Uh, oh, okay. Proof of transfer, POX, uh, and the consensus program has two kinds of printed miners and stackers. 
So Pox will... I would call... I would not call it Pox, you idiots. Yeah, I, I already don't like this idea because this thing is now starting to sound stupid to me. Parcester is separate. I mean, I understand why they're doing it. It's like... Okay, let me, I'm just going <clears> to... <throat> I'm just going to browse this real quick. Uh, I mean, I guess they could try it, but I mean, basically... Okay, block stack distinguishes itself from proof of stake because no participants don't have to put any of their assets at risk to participate. Beyond the opportunity cost, they're agreeing to lock up their STX for a certain amount of time. Uh... uh for, they really need to call this something else. Pox can give incentives to earn Bitcoin or other part of such a new block change. Uh, it goes, eh. Server stack won't be cheap though. We'll take roughly $10,000 in STX to participate, Ellie said. But like other chains with similar arrangements, you just won't need to actually have that much. They could delegate to a service that maintains the node in exchange for agreeing to lock up STX in collaboration with the node offer. Yeah, so basically it's just creating a mining pool. Uh... Red, maybe as well as uh, they earn Bitcoin. I mean, I guess, right? Um, let me see, because the problem that I have with this is, let's see, where is it? Is if you want to mine on a network, you will need to pay Bitcoin before you can start mining. So why would I do that? All right, I can already mine at a pool for free. So why the fuck would I use this? I mean, that's kind of like the problem that I have with this. But I mean, I didn't also read the article, really. I'm just skimming it. So, all right, fine. I mean, they're, they're the ones taking the risk, not not, not you or me. So, uh, plus, they, for some reason, they say it's going to compete against proof of stake. They're not even doing the same thing. So, I, I don't know. Uh, you know, we'll see. But they definitely have, like, the fact that they don't realize that they've named their acronym POX, like, getting, you know, like, right now, like, do they not realize there's a coronavirus going on right now? Like, uh, like, just, uh, just unbelievable. Unbelievable. It's just like that story with Ford. Mm. Losing my voice here. It's just like that story with Ford where, uh, they were coming out with some, I think it was Ford, they were coming out with a new product or a new name for a car. Um, and then they named it something, and then that word happened to be like the Spanish or Portuguese, but I think it was more Spanish word for like, you know, dick or, you know, go F yourself kind of thing or something. It was, it was really, it was really something bad. And they didn't even realize it until it's too late, and they're already rolling out the ads in the cars. <laughs> it's like, yeah. So that, that's that, I think that's might might be what's happening with Pox over here. So yeah, I can guarantee you, I will not be using the Pox uh, consensus algorithm. All right, I, I'm just not going to do it because you know, yeah. Uh, reconnect. All right, hold on. Let me just uh, claim my stuff. Oh yeah. So I've been so I. Switch to a new um, mobile uh, emulator. It's so much better than uh, Knox Player. It's faster. It's sleeker. And it looks it apparently looks to be a lot more stable. Mine will always just crash. I always I will always lose progress in my Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. Wasn't well, anything major. It was very annoying. So yeah. So I'm very glad for that. Anyway, SEC Crypto Safe Harbor could be most groundbreaking event for U.S. Uh, Okay, new proposal, like when there was privacy breakthrough. Um, oh yeah, we kind of heard about that before, so I guess they're just repeating that. Well, abruptly moves, actually, I, I don't want to read the technicals, I just want to know what it's called. Um, okay, Ripple, that's okay. Excuse me. All right, so Warren Buffett gets his first Bitcoin. Oh, great. I don't want to do it for the... I don't want to do it for the, uh, what is it, the page views. On the rise, better selling, much more say, e tomorrow. Okay, so basically not a whole lot here. Yeah, the quality of daily hold is just really bad for you for whatever reason. All right, so Warren Buffett got his Bitcoin um, from Justin Sun, so that's very good. Uh, there it is. Um, 
Okay. Uh, I'm going to full act here. I transferred. Uh, Mr. Bro is impressed. By, oh, okay. So Mr. Buffett is actually impressed by the speed of Trot. Check out the transaction. Yeah. So this is pretty nice. So, you know, uh, Warren Buffett's a really old school, old school boomer, right? And he's also rich and successful. So obviously he's going to be very resistant to new ideas. But he's also rich, too. He's not retarded. So he also real understands, hey, maybe I should try this new thing. So, all right. I mean, I see all these people screaming at me. I see all these successful rich people doing this weird stuff. Maybe I should look at it. So how does he? So how did Justin Sun pace and lead him? Right, in order to use persuasion terms. Well, you know, he's like, he says, oh yeah, you know, check out, check out uh, a, a collaboration with Samsung Mobile on the Fold app, right? Because Mr. Because Warren Buffett also understands, oh yeah, mobile phones are a big thing. I understand that. That's actually legitimate. And he's like, oh wow, look at all this legitimacy, right? That's what's happening right now in his investor brain. Uh, and that's actually what's going to happen to you and me as you do this. This is how I actually look at the world. So finally, whatever, you know, old remnants of the boomer shit that's holding Warren Buffett back. Now we can see that, you know, unlike, say, Peter, Sch not Peter Schiff, uh, Adam Schiff? No, Peter Schiff. See, it's always these Schiff assholes, but they're all assholes anyway. Like the one in the Democrat Party is in a huge asshole and an idiot. And then we got the uh, other one that's like the gold one. I think that's Peter Schiff, right? Um yeah, I actually think they're all doing it on purpose just to be uh, evil people. So, but yeah, anyway, Warren Buffett's like, yeah, this is pretty cool. So that's that's what we want. We want Warren Buffett to say, Buffett also has more than a few of his own regarding blockchain Bitcoin. Warren believes there's great potential in blockchain. Lots of his portfolio companies are exploring it, such as JP Morgan. He's curious to see how blockchain will play out in the payment industry in the next 10 years. I have lots of work in me. Uh, Warren Buffett feels Bitcoin still needs a lot of work in order to capture the value of blockchain. He's actually right about that. I told Mr. Buffett Bitcoin is the currency for the next generation. Buffett's son said, I'm sure my grandson would rather inherit my wealth in USD, LOL. Buffett and son are planning a reunion in 2030 in 10 years. All right. So this is actually very good. So basically, um, yeah, Warren Buffett's basically on board. All right, we can use that a little bit for uh, clickbait title, all right? Uh, but only because Warren Buffett is actually not being a prick about it, all right? Unlike other rich people who are actually going full-blown anti, you know, Bitcoin, all right? Because, you know, again, Satan and money is their daddy, not as JLP would say, right? It's not God and Jesus Christ, you know, so... I mean, I guess once you actually become a Christian and you actually understand what's really going on with it and you, you know, try to let go of all that anger and hate, yeah, you really see, you know, you really see, you know, like, uh, it's like in Buddhism, right? The all-seeing eye, I think, or something like that. Maybe it was Buddhism. But yeah, you start seeing shit, right? Uh, and that's what, and that's what we want, because we want to see what people really are, you know, the truth. Especially now that I can't do political videos, essentially. Not for a long time. Like a developer reveals privacy breakthrough, eliminating major hurdle of confidential transactions. 38 minutes. Well, I guess this will be another four view uh, video because people don't like it. <laughs> so that's just how it goes. Um, he's, he's okay. So he said there was a bottleneck uh, hindering confidential transactions on Litecoin. Uh, Mimble Wimble. The difficulty of using it is the need to, for the sender and receiver to communicate which cards are receiver to be online when sending. My proposal on an updated version of the write up will be, uh, and it eliminates that need. Okay. Uh, okay. It also seems to be uh, supporting hardware wallets uh, much better, too. Uh, he began. He plans to begin implementing the new rules that would enforce how transactions are validated and begin testing private transactions on the network in earnest. Okay, so Litecoin Foundation is funding this too. Okay, yeah, that's kind of annoying. Like, if you and I want to send money, we have to both be online at the same time. It's like trying to do like trading in a video game. That's so annoying. I just want to just put the order, let the network or the game or whatever the servers do all the hard work. And then you, the recipient, you know, just come in and, you know, take it in whenever you want. All right. Very well. Very good. Uh, we're also going to kind of need a, um, you know what? I actually might consider this, uh, actually, I never retweeted this. Great. Here we go. 
Uh, I'm gonna retweet that. Also, what is this? Five hundred and fifteen uh, chip total. Is that actually the name of the uh, currency? Huh. I always thought that was like a video game thing, like a chip clip. Chip currency. Uh, this is why where I've heard it, a credit chip. Uh, it's Wikipedia. Oh, it is from Star Wars. You got script. A script or chit in India is any substitute for legal tender. Huh, this is India? Yeah. Huh. Um, okay, and then we've got some cryptocurrency name. Oh, all right. Uh, fine. Um, try. All right. So anyway, actually, we'll make this the thumbnail. Uh, yeah, we'll do that. Wait, where are we? Litecoin, yeah. So, very good. So, yeah, I was going to say that's the that's going to be the thumbnail. Okay, so we're going to walk over that. SEC crypto safe harbor could be ground baking, blah, 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 blah. All right. Uh, the SEC commissioner, Hester Pierce, is presenting a new proposal on how to regulate crypto. Under her plan, U.S. regulators would directly shift how they are attempting to regulate it. They were no longer classify them as securities, not initially. While a handful of currencies are exempt from U.S. securities law, including Bitcoin, Ether, blah, 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 while there have been a few exceptions to the rule, the SEC maintains that the risk is quite high of an ICO being classified as a security. Well, that's a little weird, aren't they? Isn't that what they are? When, when you buy an IPO, it's a security. Because re the reason why it's called a security and not an asset is because it's not guaranteed to go up. It can actually, you can lose all your money. It goes to zero. That, that's the technical definition of a security. Uh, I don't know. This seems. This sounds a little weird. All right. Under Pierce's safe harbor, our companies that issue digital tokens will get some breathing room. They can establish your network community before dealing with regulatory requirements. Okay. All right. And she's actually head of the SEC, so she's actually doing what she's supposed to be doing. Yeah. So that's actually good. So I know because Hester Pierce has always been good. So. So that just means either the workers in the SEC are trying to screw her over, the people around the uh, the uh, around Hester Pierce is trying to screw her over on crypto, and of course you've got Trump and Steve Mnuchin being anti Bitcoin, um, at least for now. Um, but a lot of people in the U.S. government do want cryptocurrency, and they want to make sure that like it gets out there. So at least we got that going for us. Blockchain Carrier Chicago appears to up crypto really first. We grant a three year grace period and launch their first token sale to reach a certain level of decentralization. Oh, okay. This actually would work for me too. I mean, because we're already pretty decentralized here, right? But I just don't want the SEC to like start just making up bullshit later, you know, you know, down the line. If achieved, such token would no longer meet the SEC criteria of being classified as securities under the federal securities laws. Several leaders of the cryptos are applying the. Yeah, that's actually a This is actually a really good thing. The only problem is it's still pretty vulnerable to scammers, right? So, you know, that basically means you have, like, you know, three years to scam people with your ICO. But the thing is, it has to reach a level of decentralization. So that that's the key. I think the, I think the reason why the ICO is a problem is because the company that issued the ICO, aside from being a scammer, also somehow still controls all the coins, which is kind of weird to me. So, um... Yeah, but we're not, we, we, I'm definitely not doing that. I never will, right? If I want centralized control, I'm going to issue an actual stock, all right? My company that holds my video game and all that stuff, that goes public, right? You know, so, you know, I don't even care about an ICO at that point, all right? I want my shit listed on, like, you know, the NASDAQ and stuff. Because, yeah, I'll lose, um, because, yeah, I'll lose a little bit of control because, like, investors, the actual public investor will buy my shit, right? And then start screaming at me. It's like, why don't you put this in the game? We're gonna sh we're gonna dump your stock because you know f you Johnson Chen. You don't know what you're doing. It's like okay, well you know I I learned this back in college. All right, I'm gonna issue two, three, multiple layers of stock, you know, class A, class B, and all the voting power is gonna be in class B. Guess which stock you are gonna be able to buy in the stock market? The shitty class A, right? The stuff that people trade over here. You're not getting control of my company, all right? And I would say that up front, because, like, you know, screw you, you know? It's like, <laughs> it's, right? But there's probably a reason why I would want to, like, pay dividends or whatever. Oh, actually, Amazon dividends. 
I don't even think they pay dividends. Dividends on dividend 2019. Uh, uh, yeah, Amazon does not pay dividends. Microsoft for a long time did not pay dividends and then they eventually started doing it. Uh, wait, Google pays dividends? I thought they also don't pay dividends either. Will I ever pay a dividend? Yeah, I ain't gonna pay you shit for dividends. <laughs> All right. If I did, well, guess what? You're gonna be getting, you're gonna be given a little bit because that's money directly out of my pocket of the company, right? And I'd rather use that money to either pay my employees better or give them a bonus more likely, or hire more people, or just reinvest in the company. Several leaders in crypto sphere employ commissioners approach regulating new energy the light touch. Oh wait, we were we kind of already read that. Uh, Putting development first game project runway to build robust networks. Safe Harbor puts an important stake in the ground. Yeah, this is a brilliant proposal. Yeah, I like this. I absolutely like this. Uh, proposal underscores how a blockchain project arrives at decentralized needs time. Developers use use case and steady adoption. Yeah, exactly. Uh, because if because because from what I can tell, if I do what I do now, just create a new cryptocurrency with Mitch, I might come under like this bullshit SEC. And we're not even doing an ICO, right? We just want the stupid thing out there. So yeah. Fair proposal the Alan Weather Tokyo's offer so security is not staying, does not strictly inherit inherit to digital assets. Is this actually a word? In here oh wow, it really is. Exist essentially or permanently in. Be best in a person or group or attach to the ownership of a property. Yeah, this is exactly what the word they're using here is. Be vested in a person or attached. And it does not strictly inhere to the digital asset. So basically they're just saying, yeah, it's not tied to the person who issued it. Yeah, it's not, right? So while some tokens might be the characteristics of a security when first introduced, their fluid and their purpose can evolve as their network expands. Yes. Uh, yeah, exactly. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, that's exactly it. Because we need we need people to be able to create new cryptocurrencies. This is very good. This is very smart. I one this is one hundred percent the way forward. You know, like if you watch the Mandalorian, this is the way, right? CEO of e, all right, says he's he, he's also saying nice things. Uh, General Council Council of Institutional Crypto Anchorage. Um, okay, so she really wants this. Very good. Pierce is like, if, if the proposal is accepted, then it can establish strict rules for crypto blockchain project when raising capital via token sales. Clearly, issue requires for a personal score, source closer, 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 appropriate public advancement, public and of the ICO team members. Well, Mitch is not going to like this part, <laughs> you know, because he likes being anonymous. Uh, me, on the other hand, I, don't know, I honestly don't give a shit, right? Uh, network. Uh, the product clarifies the idea of network maturity or the point at which a project's digital tokens are no longer being controlled by a single entity. Okay. Paris acknowledges that the success of the safe harbor proposal depends on use. A token uh, issue is acting in good faith and it does not undermine any necessary enforcement action against fraudulent ICOs or other illegal activities. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we just want to release the fucking coin. And just, you know, in my case, right, I pay a fee to Crex, they list the coin, and then let the free market, you know, decide what the hell they want to do with it, you know? So, yeah, I would hardly call that an ICO, right? Because I don't want people going directly to us. We want it free market. We want it decentralized right from the get go, right? We just, the only thing we want to control is really the supply so the price is more stable at first. So anyway, this was obviously a 10 year long video, 49 minutes, wow. Damn, so much for a short video. All right, so anyway, if you like what you saw, read or heard, hit the like button, the follow button, or subscribe button from wherever you're all watching this from. Or on my YouTubes at youtube.com forward slash uh, the lemon factor BTC. Maybe someday, uh, you know, I'll be able to go back to politics, but it'll probably just be some sort of like weekly or, you know, two times a week on the weekends uh, call in show. That's going to be a lot of fun. So, uh, yeah, smash that subscribe button on the right hand side of this page. And uh, yeah, let's try, uh, let's try to get this uh, subscribe count up a little more. All right. Uh, cause, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, there's, uh, <laughs> not a lot of people watching now that I'm not complaining about, you know, uh, you know, the real political problems that are, you know, happening, but you know, there are, there are other ways around it. So 
Jesus Christ will lead the way, and uh, all I got to do is follow it. So, uh, yeah. So, anyway, uh, enjoy your stream day or night. Uh, we're going in the weekend. So, uh, you know, I don't expect too much to happen in crypto. All right. Cl clearly, people still want more crypto, but it looks like they want to take a break, and they're it's the weekend now, so they're actually going to um, take advantage of that. Now, that being said, because demand is still strong for cryptocurrency, this weekend we might still see some serious uh, price movements too. So it'll be interesting to see what happens during the weekend. So anyway, uh, enjoy your day or night. I will see you all in tomorrow's video. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Judson Chan. Yeah, Joe Walsh is a piece of shit. He just did it for the grifting fame. You know, all these fake conservatives really piss me off. Oh, well. Anyway, Johnson Chan, uh, JMC Coin, 404 Coin. I don't want to bother refreshing. And here is our nice little uh, thumbnail.